Good evening from Disney Springs. The Edison, I don't know where it is. I think it's over here somewhere. It's too hard to see in the viewfinder. The Edison opened. And so we're gonna go check out the Edison. Also, I believe Maria and Enzo's opened as well. We're probably not gonna eat there tonight. We might take a peek inside and have a look around, see what it looks like. But we're definitely eating at the Edison tonight, as long as they let us in and there's not a huge wait. There's a dress code, so I dressed nice. I'm wearing my, my jacket and my button up shirt and a sweater and stuff. I'm still very cold, but I'm dressed nice. Let's go check it out. Congratulations, runners. The marathon is this weekend. Here's Murray and Enzo's, which is now open. We're gonna go over to the Edison. I can't wait. I hope they're kicking people out for not having proper dress because we dressed correctly to go in to the Edison. Inside of the Edison. Look at this, there's a giant clock here. Oh, six o'clock and the clock starts to ring. See this being annoying. It's gonna ring six times like this. Come on. You don't need to do that. Oh, it only rang three. Okay, that's not bad. Wanted to give you a quick overview. Here's the bar. We've got this steam engine right here in the center. We've got all these TVs on the outside walls, which seem to be showing. Uh, the strangest cartoons I've ever seen. I don't really understand what is going on there. Well, they're not just cartoons. It's uh, like old black and white shows. That little bar that we showed you earlier was just the upstairs bar. There is the downstairs bar. That is very large. We're headed to our seats. And as you can tell, the whole staff is all set up. Thank you. If you want, try and do a Sunset Boulevard deal down the stairs. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> they sat us right next to the stage and they told us there's going to be live music at 9.30 tonight. I don't know, we might make it to that. It's going on 6.30 now. That's only three hours away. I also just noticed that there's a third bar down here. Here's the drink menu. And I think I might, I, what the heck is this thing? Sharon Edison signature for the table. Wow. I might get a mocktail because those sound actually kind of good. And their drink menu is actually really massive. So they have a lot to offer. And lots and lots of beers here too. And then wines and champagnes and then all of the different drinks that you red wines and then all of the different shots that you can get or neat cocktails here's the menu for tonight i believe they said that this was a limited menu and the actual full menu will be out later and i'm not holding back tonight I know I've been on a diet, but I'm not holding back because it's a brand new place. So for a drink, I ordered the Amelie and it's basically a virgin mojito. The entertainment that they are projecting on the wall here is interesting. What is going on? What is this? Oh, now there's more people. I like that the theming down here is like a foundry. Oh look, the emergency exit sign says plant engineers only. That's pretty interesting. I have no idea how I'm gonna show this, but this is the candied bacon that I ordered. And it comes with some sort of fruit thing? Uh, something or other. I'll have to ask her when she comes back. This sprig of rosemary, I'm not really sure why that's there. I'm thinking it's just for looks. This is clothesline bacon. And then it comes with sour pickles. Very interesting looking. Found out it's a fruit mustarda which basically is like a fruit puree. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the lights are playing the havoc on the camera. There's like lines showing up from the frame rate. This is pretty interesting. And then we got some fried calamari. I'm here with Mike, by the way. And we got some fried calamari, and they said this is a spicy marinara, and there are fried peppers in there too. And then there is my Amelie mocktail. I hope it is not, doesn't have alcohol in it because they gave me the two 
stirs like it does have alcohol in it. This will be an interesting experiment. Oh, that's pretty good. It's like a fancy lemonade. Wow, a little calamari. Oh, it's a spicy marinara. It's got like a little teeny tiny bit of a kick. This is a fried pepper. Oh, that's good. That's not the type of pepper that I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be jalapeno. It's not. It's like a regular pepper, like a green pepper. Not expecting that. Uh, it's good. But they, the flavor, the breading has the flavor of the calamari. Huh. Well, let's try the bacon. Candied bacon. Oh, it's good. Very smoky and sweet, too. Try it with the fruit puree. I'm just gonna call it a, pu a fruit puree. It's hard to say, but it's very, very sugary, like a jam, like almost like it has honey in it. Well, that's an interesting flavor together. I have to try that again. That's probably the most interesting thing I've ever had in my life. It's good. I feel like it's not supposed to go together, but it does. There's a lot of sweetness, and it's cold, and then there's the smokiness of the bacon. I like it. I like it a lot. So I have to admit, for candied bacon, it's not as candied as I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to be like super crispy bacon. It's just kind of like regular sweet bacon. Um, but I think the thing that makes it the most candied is that jam. So we just asked our waitress, there's a little seating area, almost like a loungy seating area. And we're like, what's that for? She said, at 11 o'clock, this changes from a restaurant into a nightclub and becomes 21 and up. And there'll be a live band, burlesque dancers. Right above me is this cube where she said an aerialist will be performing. And uh, the menu changes, so it's not the full menu anymore. It's more like a like a snacky type menu. They move all of these tables that were where we're currently sitting, they move all the tables out of the way, and this becomes a dance floor for the live band. So this place will be really hopping after 11 o'clock at night. We got the, this is the meatloaf with the spicy ketchup, bacon wrapped, and mushrooms. And then that is the Edison burger. Yeah, it looks good. I wanted to give you guys a side profile of this burger. Holy cow. Look at that thing. So Mike and I decided to split the two entrees, and here is the cross section of the burger. This is a signature beef blend of sirloin, short rib, brisket, and then it's got cabot cheese, onion rings, smoked bacon, house-made pickles, lettuce, tomato, and special sauce on it. And that came with seasoned fries with some spicy ketchup. Let's see how spicy this ketchup is. I feel like I'm the worst person to judge a spicy food because it's not really that spicy. But I know that some people will be like, oh, that's a really spicy ketchup. It's good though. Just tried the burger. It was good. It wasn't the best burger I've ever had. It kind of, for the amount of stuff that I read out from the burger, it kind of didn't have very much flavor to it. Like, it wasn't a bad burger. I had bad burgers before, but it wasn't the best burger that I've ever had. It was a, I would call it a mediocre high-end burger. It needed more cheese. I will give it that. Maybe just a little bit more spice, too. Like, spices. Flavor. So this is a bacon-wrapped meatloaf, which it wasn't really wrapped. It was just kind of, like, laid across the top. Spicy ketchup. Then it's got these mushrooms in it, too. Oh, man. Eey. Oh yeah, they said that there was a portobello inside of it. I'm not really seeing that, but it looks good. I've had my first bite of the meatloaf. I am a big fan of this meatloaf. It is way more flavorful than the burger, as far as meatloaf goes. Like it's not gonna blow your socks off or anything like that because it's not like a fine steak or anything like that, but it is a good meatloaf. Very flavorful. So I tried a little bit of the mashed potatoes that came with the meatloaf. They uh, kind of taste like instant mashed potatoes, which is sad. Here's the dessert menu. Oh man. Oh, banana split actually sounds really good. And then they've got coffee, 
and tea. I don't know what, I'm gonna get something. I just don't know what. I wish I liked lollipops, because I would get that. Oh, they're cheesecake pops. Yes. Bubblegum whipped cream? No. Why did you do that? Fantastic. Well, do you mind if I show you one of my inventions? Yes, please. Okay, my, my name's Rory. This is one I've been working on for almost eight years. It's a luminiferous bra, and then I hold the other. So now if I hold one and you hold one, what will happen? Nothing. <laughs> well, because you didn't complete the circuit. <laughs> Science! Yes, science. <laughs> he knows. Took me eight years, took me eight seconds. <laughs> I would tell you a chemistry joke right now, but I don't know if I would get a reaction. I like it. I like it. All the good ones are gone. Thank you so much, Rory. Nice to meet you. It's good to meet you. Came back to the bathroom. I really like these bathroom signs. They're very like 1950s airliner but they have like a communal sink, which is fun. This sink reminds me of the sinks at NASA, actually, in the vehicle assembly building. They also have sinks in here, too. This is in the bathroom. Why, hello there, chocolate cake. This looks awesome. It was called Mile High. I thought it was gonna be gigantic. It's really not that big, but it looks good. And then Mike got the apple cobbler. Normally this comes with ice cream, but because he cannot have dairy, it doesn't have any ice cream on it. It looks really good though. I just took a bite of the apple cobbler and it was really good. I do have to say, normally inside of an apple cobbler, the apples are more candied and there's more sauce inside of there. These are a little bit more firm, but it's very good. And there's not as much sugary sauce underneath there. It's delicious though. So I made it to this center stripe, and that is actually a coffee flavored uh, icing. These up here are like, oh, I just touched it. These up here are dark chocolate, like a bitter chocolate. And this is like a raspberry compote. This is very good. So I got some clarification on the dress code. They want you to look nice. They're not gonna refuse somebody that's coming in out of the street until after 10. So this is basically like a restaurant up until 10 o'clock at night, and then it turns into a nightclub, 21 and up, and then there's a dress code. They want you to have slacks, they want you to have dress shoes on, they want you to have a collared shirt, but if you're like well put together, they're not gonna tell you no. Like they, they want you to be dressed sharply, basically. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is when they have the band, the aerialist, I found out a contortionist, a hula hoop, like, performer. They also told me that there will probably be a cover after 10, like a $10 cover, but if you show up at say like nine, get some dinner, and you're already inside, you don't have to pay the cover, basically what I'm winking at you. The place was really good, and it is going to be a force to be reckoned with, especially with SDK right across the walkway. I think they're gonna have some competition there, because the food was good, huge entertainment offerings, lots of bars, three bars total, one upstairs, two downstairs. Like I think after this place gains some footing, I think Edison is gonna be a big part of downtown Disney, Disney Springs. Look at this thing. And why they send that thing up in days like this. Now that we've seen the Edison, let's go into Maria and Enzo's and have a look at that. Cause that also opened today. Hello, I love this. It's set up like an airport terminal. This is nice. And I love how it's like gate two. I do have to admit, it's a very drastic change from eating at the Edison to walking into this place. Like this looks very different. And the atmosphere in here is extremely different. Let's have a look at the menu. This is gonna be hard to do. Oh. Okay, so like traditional Italian. It looks good. 
on the inside is all of the drinks. The, both this restaurant and the Edison next door have one of the largest drink menus I've seen at Disney Springs. This is impressive. And I also like that both of them have mocktails. And I did find out that both the Edison and Maria and Enzo's and Pizza Ponte are run by Delaware North, so they're not run by Disney. That would be why the menus are very similarly laid out. Enzo's Hideaway Tunnel Bar and Restaurant sign is all lit up. We don't have an opening date for this yet. I'm sure it'll be happening sometime soon because everything else is open. In this pack of restaurants, we've got Pizza Ponte, we've got Maria and Enzo's, and we've got the Edison that are all open now. All that we're waiting for is Enzo's Hideaway. Got some fireworks going off, off in the distance, over top of the lake. I think that might be happily ever after. We're just waiting for another couple of minutes for the live band to start inside the Edison before going back in and checking them out. But I wanted to show you guys that the Harley store is no longer open. It's closed down. It says that it moved over to the uh, adjacent from the Lime Garage. I know you guys can't see it because they picked a bad color font, but there it is. It's going to open on January 8th. to show you guys while we're back in the Edison this little seating area also I have no idea what this thing is do you guys know what this is kind of looks like an old camera but I'm not sure so this seating area will be first come first serve after 10 o'clock there's a whole nother area over here too I just realized that this portion of the clock is functioning. This is a functioning second hand. That's amazing. It's actually pretty funny because you would think that it's running off of this big gear, but in all reality, it's running off that chain drive and that chain drive is actually moving this big gear up here. So it's not actually being affected. Or wait, yeah. I'm so confused. This 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 part of the gear does nothing. It's not really doing anything. It's just for show. But these are actually running this second hand down here. And then you can see the mechanism for the clock back in the back back there. That's pretty impressive. And you can see some of the workings happening back there. All in all, the night at Edison was a lot of fun. Food was good. The entertainment was fantastic. The atmosphere, great. I can't wait to try Maria and Enzo's next door because the, that looked, it was vastly different, but still looked like a lot of fun. The same company owns all three places, so 
I know that it's going to be a similar quality that we had over here at Edison. I think the Marie and Enzo's will be a little bit cheaper because just to give you guys a heads up, with tip and everything, that was a mocktail, a appetizer, a main, and a dessert, $73. So. That was a very expensive meal. It's not unusual to pay that sort of price here at Disney Springs, but it was a very expensive meal. Good, but very expensive. I would say Boathouse, Homecoming, and Edison right now are my favorite restaurants in Disney Springs. There you go. So with that being said, we are off and we will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.